It's said that full-time work takes up more of your life than any other activity you will ever do other than sleep. It's estimated that a full-time job accounts for one third of your life, which is a lot of time sitting behind a desk, lifting heavy objects and talking with your colleagues. Most people work hard to earn their keep and sometimes they go above and beyond and are rewarded in the form of additional pay. While I agree that you should always be able to enjoy the spoils of earning that money, there is always a better way to use those funds to benefit your future. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and today I'm going to be talking about ways that you could be using your overtime income to benefit your future and your overall financial situation. Over time, it is offered in many different professions. I, alongside my friends, have been fortunate enough to be able to earn tens of thousands of dollars across our short-lived careers basically working additional hours. It's a pretty unique feeling getting paid double, if not triple what you would normally be getting for doing the exact same job. Pretty much nothing is changing other than the time frame of when you're working. It's very easy to let your mind treat these additional earnings as something to be spent the moment it hits your bank account because you've worked hard to earn this extra cash, you've put in the hours and now you should be rewarded for that. Why can't I buy a PlayStation 5 with it? Why can't I put a down payment on a holiday I've been wanting to go on for a long time? The issue with this short-term reward as a payoff for your hard work is that overtime isn't something that's always going to be offered and something that is always going to be consistent in your paycheck for the most part. Where if that additional income is no longer coming in, you may need to change something like your budget, your spending habits, and potentially how you allocate funds to stay on track. The feeling can be quite depressing and it's one that I've seen with some people I know in my life who have had this steady stream of additional income and then all of a sudden it was no longer there and they needed to figure out how they were going to continue living their lives in the same capacity when it wasn't really feasible to do so without that income. Imagine your paycheck reducing by between $500 and $1,000. That reduce in excess would not make you feel good. So let's talk about how I treat my overtime income and I'll touch on some other options which I think are worth consideration. And I just wanna quickly mention that the same mentality can be applied to any other types of excess incomes that you may be bringing in, such as things like bonuses, commissions, potentially penalty rates from weekend work, and if you're lucky enough from any type of raises that you get, if you don't need access to the additional funds, the same logic can be applied here too. Any additional income from my job that I receive goes straight into my investment fund. I own property, I own crypto, I have a decent sized emergency fund. The next asset class that I'm trying to build up is my shares portfolio. I try to invest a minimum of $5,000 a year into diversified ETFs. However, that is a floor cap. That number is the minimum that I do. I don't really have a cap as to how high I'm willing to go. At the moment, my shares portfolio is kind of small. However, I wanna build that up as fast as possible to take on the effects of compounding over the course of decades, which is how long I intend to consistently add money to that pile. I do not intend to sell a dollar from it for as long as I possibly can. I wanna see those historical returns and that's gonna take a hell of a long time to get there. So when I earn overtime, I treat that cash as if I never saw it. I never had access to it. It's nothing, it gets set aside and it goes into my routine purchase cycle so that it builds up my portfolio over time. It's pretty simple in nature, it's something I've built the habit of getting into and it's benefiting me now because I'm technically building for my future without losing anything. I'm not having to sacrifice anything I was already earning. If you wanted to learn more specifically about my investment journey and where it's taking me, I've left some handy links in the description below as well. So feel free to watch those resources as you wish in your own time. They're down there for easy access. And if I could quickly get you to hit that like and subscribe button as well, now's the perfect time to remind you. So thank you if you did take the time out of your day to quickly do that. If I wasn't using these excess funds to invest in particular, my second option would be to put them straight into my offset account. Offsetting a mortgage at the moment is going to be high priority for a lot of people. The economy and the world is kind of in shambles. Interest rates are rising. Stress, especially mortgage stress, anyone with high level debts, are going to want to be getting that offset as fast as possible. It's gonna be in their best interest. It's also going to save them a lot of interest over the course of decades. I think over the next few years, it could get very bumpy for those who have over leveraged. I've talked about this on the channel extensively. So have a scroll through of the videos on the channel if you are interested in understanding what's going on 
especially if you're someone with a lot of debt who isn't really sure what you're going to be doing over the next 12 months, 24 months even, for the next decade, it could be a bit sweaty for many. Taking it back to the offset example though, you're basically just aggressively saving and there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's going to be in your best interest, like I said, to make sure that you are in a safe position and if your mortgage is stressing you out, this may be one way to offset that a little bit. Another consideration, and this one's where I sound like a broken record, but it's in the list because it's one that definitely should be important to many if you have any high interest debt, any personal loans, car loans, credit card debt, excess income, 100% could go into paying down that high interest debt as fast as possible because you're going to save more in the long run for every dollar you put towards it is a dollar less you pay on interest. It's going to be a win factor no matter what. I don't need to talk about this one anymore. I think it's pretty straightforward. I guess the take home from this point is that once you pay down that debt and it's gone, you're just going to be putting more money in your pocket. So you're making the investment upfront to pay down some debt that you took on for whatever reasons, no judgment at all, totally understand it happens, but it's something that could benefit you greatly doing that extra work to really get yourself back on track. And the last option on my list would be to set aside that money for a purchase that has been a long time in the making. However, you're not, or you haven't really been in a position to make it because it might've been a little bit too expensive, might've been out of your price range, or you couldn't justify spending the money from your own personal accounts. Depending on how much you're earning in overtime and how long that overtime is going to last, you could potentially build all the way up to purchasing a new car if your old one is needing replacement. It's a good example, one I've seen people actually use. I know someone who spent about $15,000 on a car, completely paid for with their overtime earnings. It's pretty impressive. That was a couple years in the making. However, they specifically wanted to allocate the funds to purchase that car and they did not have to touch any of the money in their bank account that was earned from their normal nine to five. To me, that is a pretty impressive way to offset a big upcoming cost without having to feel guilty about spending from your hard earned savings or from accounts that have a completely different purpose. One example for me that fits that criteria is my personal computer. I use this thing as if it's like an extension of my arm. I use it for YouTube, I use it for my job. It is just the one of the most used things in my house and what it provides me, the value I get out of it, it's amazing. I've had it for 10 years and it's starting to slow down. I'm looking at spending about $10,000 on an upgrade at some point, but it's pretty hard to justify where to pull that money from, from my various accounts. So using this overtime method of putting that extra cash aside for this purpose could absolutely be a way to approach it. It might take me a year or two years to save that amount of money, but the outcome will be me not feeling guilty from spending freely from my other accounts which have different purposes, like I just mentioned. Kind of moving into the back end of today's video now, depending on how much you're earning in overtime, I would still absolutely be allocating a little bit of those funds to leisure spending. However, just take into consideration the benefits that you could be gaining if you purposed it to something that would benefit your future. And realistically, it's not money you're relying on because it's overtime, it's excess income that it could be used to really help you grow out whatever it is you're wanting to achieve in the future. I really wanna put emphasis on it. It's something that I have been doing for a long time now and I'm really already starting to see the benefits. I'm not even 30 years old yet. I will be not too far away, but it's something that by the time I hit 40, I'm hoping that that feeling just continues to grow and go in that direction. Personally, I would like to retire before the actual official retirement age here in the country where people gain access to a pension, which is currently at the time of recording this video, 66 years of age, even though there's talks that it might be increasing even more than that. It's something to reiterate. I don't want to be retiring at 66. I don't think most people do. I don't think it's what most people plan to be doing, especially people who have their life in control. It's something that is worth mentioning that th this overtime right now could contribute to me not having to wait until I'm 66 to be able to retire effectively. Sacrifices will need to be made over the next few decades to get there. However, this is just one piece of the pie that will allow me to get there a little bit faster, potentially, who knows? I'm not a guru, I don't actually know if it will get me there. But the point that I'm trying to make is I'll still enjoy my hobbies, my social life, and have great interactions with my family and friends. The point is, is that I'm still purposing money towards this cause for a good reason. Small wins like earning money from overtime is something that I'm willing to put up front now for the long-term benefit or for the end game as I like to call it. For me, it's truly worked wonders over the past decade and it's something that I plan to continue doing well into the future. 
And that is pretty much all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you took something from it. I hope I provided a little bit of insight. If I did, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. You have no idea how much it helps the channel grow and I really do appreciate the support. And with that being said, I'm gonna leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.